Hello everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look back in time at some of my older bag collections. These are bags that I regret selling. I've lost them, whether it be in like a fire or what have you. We're gonna talk about car wrecks. Lots of drama today. So if that's something you're into, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, unboxings, luxury travel, daily vlogs, pretty much anything that has to do with life and style, you're gonna find right here on this channel. So if that's something you're into, before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up and turn on the bell icon so that way you're notified when I post new content every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Now, I'm gonna preface this video. A lot of these photos were taken with a really old Canon digital camera or a Fujifilm digital camera. So the photos I'm gonna share with you aren't the best. Some of these go as back as 2008. So they're they're pretty old pictures. This is also before Instagram where everything had to be like perfect in place. These are not photos that I would take today or share today. They're only here for the storytelling. So just look at the bag and not really at the image, if you will, because these are, there are some really embarrassing doozies up ahead. So buckle up. When it comes to my bag collection, I feel like I've had four phases where I've either lost them to a fire, sold them all, what have you. We're gonna cover it all today. And this is all in anticipation of next Sunday's video. I'm going to be sharing my 43, 43 designer bag collection video with you guys. This isn't going to include the Coach and Longchamp bags. I consider those contemporary. It's not going to have my Louis Vuitton luggage in it, just the designer bags. Kind of a lead up to that. This is going to kind of show you guys where I started from very humble beginnings to what we have today. Before we go any further, let's just dive in. All right, so let's travel back to 2007. I had just graduated high school. I was making my own money. I didn't have my parents and their twisted ideas of what fashion should be or lack thereof, complete lack thereof. So with one of my first paychecks, I bought a Louis Vuitton Speedy 35. I couldn't have paid more than 150 for this bag. And for me at the time, that was a lot of money. Now this bag was my pride and joy. I carried it everywhere. And looking back, I am completely ashamed. This bag was very rough, very dark fashetta. The original Louis Vuitton zipper was broken and it had been replaced by some YKK zipper that was also broken so I couldn't zip the stupid thing and there was a hole in the side of the bag probably about like that big that had just been filled in with like vinyl car seat repair putty it was a pretty gross old bag like I said I think it was like mid to early 80s so it was like that nice thick canvas but it had seen its day like it was dying it was it was dead the bag was dead I loved this bag and you can tell me anything about it so then that led me to buying another bag the Trocadero 27, also from Louis Vuitton. So the, I'm thinking with the Trocadero 27, the, the Vachetta's dry and cracked. I think this was another situation where the zipper was broken and considering it's a vintage LV, I'm sure it had sticky pockets. And for some reason back then, so this bag hit me kind of like higher up on the torso, which was like a huge no-no back then. Because if you all remember 2007, 2008, men had to carry those big clunky messenger bags that hung below the hip, basically on your thigh. Just wearing bags higher up just wasn't cool yet. Like the bum bag look. Looking back, is this a bag that I could get back into now? Absolutely. It kind of reminds me of the Danube, but just more spaced out, which would probably be more convenient. Do I really want to, you know, hunt one down? Not really. I think I ended up selling this to a friend um, to give to his girlfriend at the time, and I would be incredibly surprised if she still had it. And in fact, both the Speedy 35 and this Trocadero, if they're still walking this earth and not in a rubbish bin somewhere, I would be literally blown away. But good for them if they are. So fast forward a few months, I got it in my head that, hey, I want to go to Louis Vuitton, have the, the, the big experience, and buy a brand new Speedy 40. So I was literally saving up my change. I would pay for everything in cash. And then when I went to the gas station, I would literally put in like $20 and one cent. So that way I would get 99 cents back to throw in my Louis Vuitton fund. And I think it took me like three months scrimping and saving and the change game to build up to going to the store. Now, mind you, back then the Speedy 40 was like 720, 745, like, like it, it should be priced. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just literally a plastic bag with some leather trim, if we're being completely honest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Speedy and I'd have one again, but they are $1,700 now and I think that is absolutely asinine. We went to the Indianapolis Saks Fifth Avenue and again, look beyond the outfit. I don't know what I'm thinking with this pink Oxford shirt with the rumpled collar, the, what is the Argyle sweater vest and these awful jeans from PacSun. Why I thought this was a look, oh my God. And back then I had the massive cubic zirconia earrings, a shaved head and a chin strap. 
It was a different time. So in this photo though, I'm looking in the background, I can see the Louis Vuitton Multicolor, I see a Hudson, I think that's what that was called, the Beverly, I see some Suhali in the background, all the Marc Jacobs era goodness. I remember, I think his name was Ryan, was the sales associate and he was not, he wasn't great to work with. <laughs> Honestly, I just remember he was kind of a jerk, um, but I didn't let that get me down. In fact, I think we all went out to the car and I switched into my Speedy 40 and then we went across the street. I forget what that restaurant was called, but we went out for brunch. We were with Zane's mom and we just made it a fun shopping day. And Zane actually that same day bought me a luggage tag to go in the bag. And I don't know why I did such small initials, but I did like small blue initials. I clearly don't know how to put a Louis Vuitton luggage tag on a bag because that's wrong. Um, I can spot that now a mile away. There's my old Ikea bed. <laughs> A lot has changed. Anyway, I loved that bag, carried it everywhere. We'll get to it, I lost it, but we'll get to that here in a minute. So then later that year for my birthday, I got the Michael Kors Jet Set Tote. Michael Kors then is not Michael Kors now. Like I can still appreciate Michael Kors now, but Michael Kors back then was on point. This was kind of before he started copying everyone else's designs, if you know what I mean. He just had like a really cool look. It was fresh. It wasn't on everybody's arms, kind of like it was, you know, five, 10 years ago. And I loved this tote. Um, whenever we come into Chicago, I would carry that or my Speedy 40. You can see my old coach bucket hat that I kind of flipped the back up into a fedora. There's my old T-Mobile sidekick with the Coach Legacy cell phone charm on there. I miss those. Wristlet, sunglasses, uh, my old keychain, and of course the umbrella. And I just thought I was big fancy <laughs> with all this signature stuff. For some reason back then, I, if, if I was gonna spend money on something, I wanted you to know what it was rather than buying leather. I'm like, why would you pay more and not everyone's gonna know what it is in my mind back then? And my how things have changed. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a close-up of that legacy charm again. Sorry for these terrible photos. It's 2007. I was big into the purse form back then, as you can see there on the cell phone. And yeah, it was another time. Okay, now this bag has a really sweet story. So I was obsessed with this coach bag. It was big. I mean, it's covered in Vachetta. I still have it. Well, not it, but we'll get to that in a minute. At the time, that was a lot of money for me, as you can tell. And Zane surprised me and bought it for me at the outlet. It was an absolutely gorgeous bag. It still is. I, I still have one of them. It's just something fun. I will never get rid of this bag. It's, it's always going to be in my collection and just something cute. So this next bag, though, the coach... Uh, transatlantic clutch bag, which I still have in my collection. I bought it again recently and the turquoise card holder. So one day Zane snuck up to the outlet without me. It was like back then we, it was like 20, 25 minutes away up north. We lived in a small town. He picked me up at work and said, you know, can you help me carry in the groceries? Well, he pops the trunk and there's that beautiful white and red coach bag. And inside he had gotten me the coach bag, which I had been eyeing and then a wallet to go with it. I still have that wallet. Well, a new iteration anyway. And I absolutely love it. He hasn't done anything sweet like that since, so it's been about 14 years and I'm just kidding, Hello. mostly. Um, so as you can see, my collection had grown quite a bit still. Um, I have yet to add a truly full on leather bag. Obviously I've gotten into the Duty and Burke It because I couldn't afford the gorgeous multicolor bags yet, which I finally now have 15 years later almost. And then I, I collected some more SLGs. Here's a Coach Hamptons Weekend patchwork, which used to be really popular. Every, I think every season, there'd be a new Coach Hamptons patchwork and especially during the holidays. So everyone always have to run out, get the holiday patchwork bag. I loved this one. And I think I returned that piece because I don't remember being in my collection for very long, but I loved those hang tags. They just reminded me of like sailing and like a Hamptons weekend, obviously. Then my obsession with wristlets and mini skinnies kicks in. Back then, I would have a card holder in my bag. I would have a mini skinny or change purse, change holder. For some reason, I thought I needed to carry coins around, even though I never used them. And the wristlets would hold my digital camera because back then you took that everywhere with you. And so I had a problem with collecting mini skinnies and wristlets and I would pair them up depending on the bag. I had like specific ones that went together. These are my wristlets. So I think I have a couple of bleakers. I have a beautiful Soho with the suede trim. There's a gorgeous signature stripe, the Dooney and Burke It, of course, signature stripe. I loved it. And then for my mini skinnies, I had a couple Dooney and Burks, a couple Sohos, a bleaker. That's an ergo there in the middle. And then I added one of my favorite bags. Now this looked so silly on me back then. And even now that fashion has evolved for men, I still don't think I can pull it off, but I tried my hardest. The Dooney and Burke Alto Frame Satchel in Brown Tomorrow. I 
You guys, I was obsessed with this bag. It was gorgeous. It had a beautiful lock on the front. It had the key clichette. I loved the hardware. I loved pebble leather. I liked the little frame at the top. It was a beautiful bag, but I'm sure I looked silly carrying that one. So then at TJ Maxx, I was a huge TJ Maxx shopper back then. I was lucky enough to find a Michael Kors Jet Set rolling luggage piece to match my tote. I only got to carry it once and we'll cover that here in a minute. Still a little jaded about it. I just thought it was the the big the big thing. I, I thought it was so cool. Like I said, you know, I still haven't evolved into leather much yet, but mm, we'll get there. So then this next bag was one of my favorites. I think this is another one that Zane bought me. This was from the Grison for Target line. Do you guys remember Grison at all? Do they still make bags? I don't know. This bag was clear plastic, leather, and it's a terrible photo, I, I know. But if you can't tell, the, the, the leather is like woven on the front. Those would like constantly pop out. So you'd have to like tuck them back in because they did a terrible job making it. Anyway, if I ever came across one again that was in decent shape, I'd probably buy it. But this was unfortunately another bag like all the ones I've shown you so far that I lost. We'll get to that here in a minute. We're building up to it, building up to the drama. So here's the bag from the actual website way back when. Thank you, Target. Oh, this bag. This was one of my favorite bags. So this is the Heritage Stripe Satchel in the XL size. I think it came in two sizes. The XL had those really really cool like straps down the front. I bought it because I missed out on the first time. The first time had like the cool canvas webbing straps and was a little bit bigger, but this one, oh my gosh, it was coated canvas. Coach had just started doing that. It was beautiful. I'm guessing at the time, I wanna say thank you to my Von Mar card with 0% interest for letting me get this, <laughs> but I absolutely loved that bag so much. It was so cool. I literally had it for like a month, but we're about to get there. We're getting there, you guys. So then this is we're, we're getting to the end of my first phase of my collection. So this is my coach collection. As you can see, I've added a few more things. There's a Chelsea capacity wristlet that's really cool. There's Chelsea wallet. I've gotten some more wallets. I haven't really added so much to the coach part, but the Michael Kors section, I added another jet, like another canvas tote. I actually carried that to the Sex and the City premiere when the first movie came out back in 08 quite a choice. I remember it like downpoured and we were stuck in the theater because we couldn't get back out. Um, there's a Michael Kors like vanity case that I use to travel with. And then of course that gorgeous jet set tote. I'm trying to decide like from a nostalgic standpoint, I would love to have that tote back in my collection. I just don't know if I would ever use it. My Dooney and Burke collection, I, as much as I love Dooney and Burke, it didn't really go very far, but I absolutely love the it pieces. If I still had them in my collection now, they'd probably be yellow and really gross because the Dooney and Burke it pieces did not hold up well, which is a shame because they're really cool. This is my miscellaneous collection. So I've got my Louis Vuitton Speedy. That's a wallet from Gurkha. They make beautiful other stuff. The Grison for Target tote and the YSL scarf that I think was Zane's grandmother's. And then here's the collection as a whole. A lot of signature, only a couple kind of leather nondescript pieces, but it's very in your face and very tacky and I'm here for it. I think as most bag collectors go, we all kind of start out maybe in this route um, because you just want everyone to know you're carrying a coach bag or an LV bag. Like you want it splashed all over the bag, which is, I mean, it's fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love my like nondescript Balenciaga and Fendi bags, but I also love my loud in your face LV and coach bags still. We're here for it, it's a vibe. So then right before the big event, which we're building up to. Me, Zane, and his mom went to the coach outlet. I bought this gorgeous transatlantic cabin bag. Never got to use it. And some like more wristlets, mini skinnies. I think I got a legacy keychain that I never got to use. And then the first fire. Yes, I say first fire because we've been through two. So this apartment fire was a complete loss. Our apartment ended up collapsing into the first floor. It was the day before Thanksgiving. I had just gotten laid off two days before it happened. So I just lost my job because of the economic downturn in 08. We had a complete loss in our apartment. We had a total apartment fire, lost everything. And then the next day was Thanksgiving and I had to put on a happy face and go and eat with my family. Really cool week. Best week of my life. So the apartment complex after the fire, they immediately knocked the building down because it was about to fall anyway. They put up a fence around it to try and like keep people out. So that way, you know, after Thanksgiving, we under supervision, we could go in, sift through the rubble and pull our stuff out. Someone literally went through the fire and stole a lot of our valuable stuff. The way the building fell, I kind of remembered like where stuff landed, stuff was gone. My Michael Kors luggage piece was just sitting on top of everything. Like it wouldn't have fallen like that. Someone went in, sifted everything out. They pulled out our laptops. We never found those. They pulled out my LV bag. Most of my bags actually were missing. I think I found a few of them and I didn't know about ozone and restoration. We didn't have insurance. So I just threw them away. And yeah, it was a very dark time. Glad it's behind me, but what can you do? So literally everything I just showed you guys, except for the coach card holder that happened to be in the coat that I wore as 
I was carrying our guinea pig and the TV out of the apartment was a complete loss. I never got any of it back. So fast forward to my next collection, phase two. This is what I'm gonna call my contemporary phase and there's a lot less to get through here. So right off the bat, I started out big and I just, I bought a few of the bags that I had the first time around. I rebought the the Heritage Stripe Satchel back, the XL Satchel, a few of the mini skinnies, and then that was about it, honestly. So I started out with this Marc Jacobs. It was called the Milky Tote. It was a coated canvas. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so cool. I had it in two sizes, actually. I think I bought it in the small, and then I exchanged it for the large one, and I, I loved the large size. It was so cool. This next bag, this is a terrible photo, but this is the Coach Hudson. It was technically geared toward um, travel. But back then, if a man was going to carry a bag, it had to be absolutely massive. So here it is on me. I must have just finished a diet because I look amazing, if I do say so myself. Oh my gosh, I just... That was an amazing bag, but it was so heavy. I can't believe I carried that around as much as I did. I also found a really cool Coach Hampton's tote. The interior was like this gorgeous shade of Kelly Green, white trimming. I loved that bag. I don't know why I sold it. I couldn't have gotten much out of it anyway. So here it is on me. I, I don't know what the heck I'm wearing in this photo. I know that's a lot of Old Navy up top, probably some more Pac Sun jeans and yikes. It was 2008. It was a different time. It was probably 09 at this point. So then right after our fire, someone very graciously gifted me the Coach XL Lily. Looking back, it looked absolutely horrendous on me. I'm not sharing a photo of that because that was the whole thing. It did cause a lot of drama when I ended up selling the bag. I, I reached out to the person who gifted it to me in the first place and I was like, hey, I will forever be grateful for this, but it doesn't really work on my frame. Would you be offended if I sold it? She was so gracious. She said, absolutely not. Like th there's no strings attached. Like if it's not working for you, sell it, live your life. And other people couldn't quite grasp that concept, that notion, and I was crucified for it. And then I, that kind of made me step away from the community for a while. But this bag was absolutely gorgeous. I still from time to time kind of look online just to see if there's one selling for a decent price. I think the best price one right now is like $6.99. Comes with a wallet and a scarf. <sighs> I've had it before, so I know it's quirks and that legacy collection, a lot of the hardware will get like vertigree. So you'd constantly have to like take a toothpick and dig the green stuff out of the hardware. And I don't know if I'd want to pay more than like 300 for it if I had the opportunity. And a lot of these still are priced at a thousand. And oh my gosh, back in the day I was able, I wasn't able, like I found an Atlantic XL Lily at our outlet and I didn't buy it. I could have bought that and flipped it for such a profit because the Atlantic XL Lily was like the end all be all. That is what you aspired to have. That's That was the pinnacle color from this collection. Now this bag, this next bag, I'm going to put you guys on a quest. I absolutely have to have this back in my collection. I regret selling it. I know that I sold it for way too little. I have literally only ever seen it once after I sold it in the tan color. I had the chambray. This is the Coach Bleaker XL Tote. It was reversible, so you had the suede on the outside with the Coach Leatherwear stamp on the front. You had the gorgeous kind of zippered pocket on the back, and then the inside or the outside, if you flipped it, was that thick, rich Bichetta leather. And I was an absolute fool for selling it. like. This bag is the one that I regret the most from all of my collections, all the phases for having gotten rid of. And I know I sold it to someone for like a quarter of what it's worth. So stupid. So if any of you have this bag, it's style number 12377. If you know someone with this bag, if you've seen this bag, let me know right away because I will literally buy it from you today if it's in good condition. So send me photos, send me the link. I have to have this bag back. I am such an idiot for selling it. <laughs> Help me, please. So this is kind of my collection as a whole at the time. As you can see, I have started to evolve a little bit more. There's a lot more leather this time around, that gorgeous Hamptons Capacity wristlet in the blue. I have that gorgeous Coach Legacy purple agenda. I don't know why I carried a big agenda around. I'm, it's like I'm a businessman. I was literally going to school and working at Walmart during college, so before I worked at Coach. A lot of cool stuff in this collection. Coach Scribble print. There's some of the last Soho round that they did, or at the time, I still have my uh, XL Lily the gorgeous bleaker bag, the Marc Jacobs, a lot of good old stuff in this photo and I would love to have some of it back. So then I collected some small leather goods, that gorgeous Coach Hampton's 10th anniversary wristlet, clutch, whatever you want to call it. It was covered in Vichetta. I loved it. So as you know, I lost my Coach Transatlantic tote in the fire. This is really sweet. So I found one again on eBay. It was in pretty good condition. 
wasn't that bad. Decent price, it was, it was an auction. I, I really hate auctions because they make me antsy. I just wanted to buy it now and just get it over with. So I'd watch this bag all week and then I'm bidding on this bag. I've got Zane on the phone and I kept getting outbid. It's like the last five minutes and this idiot on the other end just keeps outbidding me. I'd bid, bid a little more, bid, bid a little more. And finally I told Zane like, I'm putting in my last bid. It's X amount of dollars. And if I get outbid, it is what it is. That's all there is to it. <sighs> Needless to say, I ended up getting outbid. Fast forward a week, I open a box. It's the bag. Zane was the one bidding against me on this bag. And it was nice to have it back in my collection. I still have it. Even after the next big event, which we'll talk about here in a minute. I still have it in my collection. It has a very special place in my heart. I'll never get rid of it, even though it's way too big to really carry on the daily, too small to really travel with, but I love it. Okay, this next piece is another major regret. This is the Coach Poppy Pom Pom bag charm. Why did I sell it? It reminded me at the time of the Hermes Carmen, the little tasseled keychain. I hung it on my bags and I loved it and I sold it like an idiot. Probably again for a fraction of what it's worth. I, I remember it was super collectible at the time. It's light blue suede, so I can't imagine many have held up very well over the years if there's that many out there anyway. So if you have one of these, again, if it's in good condition, DM me, I will literally buy it from you today. This next bag is kind of one that I regret returning. So this is the Dooney and Burke Alto Janine North South Tote, I think is what it was called. I absolutely loved it. Um, again, this was a bag that at the time I thought was too small on me. So I ended up returning it because I wasn't very comfortable with it. However, this style of small tote is really big. So I've considered buying it again on eBay. I think I found one recently that was in pretty decent shape. But again, would I really grab a Dooney and Burke bag out of the collection I have now? Probably not often as much as I hate to, to admit that. I love Dooney & Burke, don't get me wrong, it'll always have a special place in my heart. I just don't think I would be able to justify that purchase or the very valuable real, real estate in my bag closet. It's very full at this point. Trying to convince Zane to let me get more. <laughs> This next piece was a gorgeous addition to my collection. This was the Coach Signature Stripe Carry On, Carry All, I can't remember. Of course, it's in the woven jacquard fabric. So literally once you took all the stuffing out and just had like a few things inside, it would just collapse. So I'd be constantly like fluffing it back up. This was like my holy grail bag at the time, my end all be all. I, I found it on eBay for a decent price and I might, I maybe kept it for less than a year because we're about to come up on my Louis Vuitton phase and a lot of things got hit the chopping block to, to buy that stuff. Coach Tattersall graffiti print. Again, something else that I would love to have in my collection. Have they held up well because of the metallic foil leather trim? Probably not, but I would love to have one of these. This next piece, um, Coach Hamptons. They did like a really rich, thick line of Hamptons again. And why I sold this wristlet, I can never find it again. This is something I look for periodically and it was very expensive at the time. I paid a lot for that piece. So then I ended up selling all of that. I got in my head that, ew, Coach, Michael Kors, ugh. And I decided to go only, only, only Louis Vuitton. So I ended up selling all that stuff, which I majorly regret, except for the Coach Bag Zane bid against me on. And I started selling things off for a lot less than what they were worth, but I was just excited to start on my new journey, my new phase. And the very first thing I bought that's still in my collection is the LV Keep All 45 in the Epi Leather. I have the Toledo Blue. It's still in my collection. It's an 88, which is the year I was born, so it's very important. This bag comes in handy here in a little bit, so we'll cover that. And then I also, right off the bat, bought the Speedy 40 again, because as you remember, I lost that in a fire, so I had to have that back. Once I bought that, I decided I needed some small leather goods, so I picked up the Zippy Coin Purse, which I absolutely loved. I'm actually rebuying that again soon. The Posh Toilette 15, which I sold stupidly before they became big because everyone wanted to throw straps on them and make them into bags when they weren't. Rebought that for a lot more than what I paid for the first time. And then this one absolutely kills me. I had a mint condition Agenda PM groom. Complete set, all the paperwork, the box, the dust bag, and I sold that like an idiot. I also added the Epi Mandarin Clay to my collection, the Speedy 40 in Borneo Green. Looks like I just went shopping because I've got a Burberry bag and a Ralph Lauren. Oh, factory outlet. So this would have been the Michigan City outlet before they got rid of the Burberry store. Now this bag absolutely breaks my heart. This is the Borneo Green sack plat. I was so lucky I bought it right after someone had relined it. So it had a fresh lining on the inside, gorgeous mint condition. I actually sold it to someone else here on YouTube. And then I tracked this bag down, believe it or not. I found the person he sold it to. They've since had it painted. It's got like, a I can't remember what's painted on the front, but it's like initials or a crest or something. 
Anyway, so this is what I used to carry on a daily basis. I've got my groom agenda because I'm like going to school. I'm in class. I got to write down my assignments. I have my Posh Toilet 15, which is carrying my Fuji film, which is taking all these gorgeous high quality photos. My LV monogram four key holder, which I still have. The zippy coin purse and the Epi Mandarin clay because, you know, I might need for change for parking. Even though the parking garage downtown whenever I went downtown was free, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, this is another ick outfit on me. Um, oof, God, that's rough. Um, I have no words. It's, it's a look. This is the Marc Jacobs trash bag, as we lovingly referred to it. Um, <laughs> it was the nylon packable shopper tote. I bought it at Von Mar for like maybe $50 and I loved it. This was like my cool go-to slouchy edgy look bag. And I, I loved this tote. However, I had my Versace sunglasses case in there and it turned it black. I was so mad. Um, but this was kind of my rainy day bag. I could throw my phone in the pocket up at the top at a Velcro snap closure, whatever you want to call it. Super cool. I also added the Posh Corad, Poshette Corad from the Taiga line. Loved that bag. The Somer 35, much to Zane's chagrin, was a bag that I absolutely loved. I ended up selling it because it looked like the leather strap was really dry and about to snap, so I sold it. And it was such a pain to get in and out of. I didn't need all that space, so it's not something I'll be rebuying ever again. One bag that I do regret selling because because at the time, I wanna say I paid like $900 for it, which back in like 2012, 2013 was a lot of money for me. I was working at the coach store, going to school, not making a ton of money. I bought the Sorbonne and Sapongo Gold. Gorgeous color, mint condition bag, absolutely gorgeous. I ended up selling it for half of what I paid for just because I wanted it sold. And this was my collection at the time, minus a few SLGs. And I just thought it was so cool to have so many LV bags in one collection. I loved it. So then I ended up selling most of those except for the Keep All 45 and a couple SLGs like the four key holder that I still have. And I bought a car with the money. So the bag collection paid for most of the car. I think I ended up financing the rest for like $160 a month, which what I wouldn't give, well, I don't have a car payment anymore because I don't have a car, I sold it. But like what I wouldn't give to pay that again for a monthly car payment, $160, that was absolutely insane. I loved it. Gorgeous car. I ended up uh, T-boning someone because they blew a stop sign. Just my luck. Uh, the insurance company ended up losing the car. They over-evaluated it, almost totaled it out once it was done because they had valued it too high. I don't know, it was a whole thing. So then. A a couple years later in 2018, we had our second fire and the LV keep all literally came in handy because I threw all the silver from the dining room cabinet into it and I threw all of Zane's video games in an Ikea bag and I'm just in my pajamas walking down the street in the middle of February with a burning building behind me. I've had a very interesting life. My bag collection has had a very interesting life and after all that happened, I kind of took off for a few years, you know, I, I sold everything. I had a couple of luggage pieces and I didn't think I needed anything else. Then I bought the LV Reporter for our trip to Italy and that just snowballed and turned into my collection now, which is, I think we're coming close to 60 bags at this point if you count both contemporary and luxury designers. What can you do? It is what it is. I hope that has given you a little bit of background on myself and my bag collecting habits. Hopefully I didn't sound like too much of a snob. I loved all the stuff in the past and I wish I still had it all, but you, you, you live and you learn and it is what it is. This is going to lead up to next Sunday's video where we are going to showcase the 43 designer bags in my collection. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. It is also going to celebrate my one year anniversary here on YouTube, which is coming up on March 27th, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to do a video on Wednesday after my bag collection video next Sunday, just kind of showcasing my first year. If this is something you're into, like what to expect, getting monetized, you know, interacting, building a community, cringing at some of the old videos, because trust me, some are very cringy. Some of the new ones are still very cringy, so we'll have that to laugh at and have fun with. Anyway, you guys, I know today was rambly. There wasn't a whole lot of eye candy in the room with me. We had a lot of photos. Were they good photos? Not really, but it is what it is. Thank you for watching this today and learning a little bit about me. Now, let me know down in the comments, are there any bags that you regret selling or have you also been in a fire and have you also lost a lot of bags all at once? It's traumatizing. I know, done it twice. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for everything. Stay safe, have fun this week, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye-bye.